he did start with a lot of money. But his success story is obviously enormous also because he might have used his name and gone broke a couple of times and bluffed his way through some business deals and all the different things he might have done. But he turned his name into a brand. He was very good at branding products and branding stuff. He was very good on TV. And now he's done the unthinkable. He's actually turned it into a stint as the president of the United States, so, which is unbelievable. On the other side, you got a guy who started from very modest beginnings, who, after losing his job, went out and started an industry that revolutionized the information industry and has turned it into the Bloomberg empire. And his business is worth, you know, he's worth, as a billionaire, he's worth $50 billion, one of the richest men in the world. So both have had enormous amounts of success, both from our city here in New York. Both have had enormous amounts of success. One's been this incredibly successful businessman, three-time mayor, Okay, the other guy becomes president of the United States. Yes, he started from very wealthy beginnings. No one said he didn't. But he became the president of the United States when everyone said it was impossible. So, I mean, they both, they square off here. If they are going to square off this year, it's going to be fascinating to watch. Don't think that, don't think for a second that they both don't realize the other one's going to be a handful. They do. Don't think for a second that the president doesn't think Bloomberg's going to be a handful. He does because he respects money that comes with power, and he knows this guy's got more money than he knows what to do with. And he understands data, and he understands media, and he's a very bright man, and he's got smart people around him. We know he's not a great debater, which Trump hits him on. We know he's small of stature. He's not a very personal. I've told you that. I've been in his company. I've been in both their companies on numerous occasions. I've been in Trump's company more. I know Trump much better than I know Bloomberg. I've met both of them. I've known Trump much better than I know Bloomberg. Um, I've been in both of their companies on multiple occasions. Trump is, like I said, just like you would feel if you were talking to Clinton or you were talking to Bush I never met Obama, so I can't use him as an example. Um, those guys, they make you feel like you're, they're, they're your best friend. That's just the way they are. They're outgoing. They're personable. They're funny. They're good company. They, you know, The last time I was in Trump's company was at a Ranger playoff game. He was at the game. I was at the game. We both had our wives at the game. He and I sat next to each other, and that was the year before he was running for president. And actually, he told me that night he was going to run for president. I didn't even think he was serious, but he was kidding. And we sat next to each other that night at the game. And had a couple, you know, we talked a bunch of times. And, you know, he talked to everybody down in between periods and everything. And he had not yet made it official that he was running. So was, I never saw him, never been in his company since that happened. Um, but uh, so very personal. I've been in the mayor's company on numerous occasions, but he's not very outgoing. He's very, very withdrawn, doesn't say much, very quiet. Um, you know, doesn't make a very, he's not very boisterous. You're not going to know he's in the room. Trump, you can know he's in the room as soon as he's in there. Uh, Bloomberg, you're not going to know he's in the room. How he's going to be on the debate stage is going to be very interesting because he obviously has a very quick mind. He obviously it can be surly. So you wonder how he's going to be when people attack him. They're going to attack him. They're trying to attack him. They're going to attack him as being rich. They're going to attack him. If he's on the debate stage, they're going to attack him as a guy who isn't really a Democrat. They're going to attack him as someone uh, who's trying to buy an election, trying to buy a nomination. That's how they're going to treat him. So it's going to be very interesting. Now, the one thing is, if you're on there with him, you want to – Bernie won't tread softly because Bernie – wants this badly. He wants to be the nominee badly and he's not doesn't care if he doesn't get it or he doesn't need the one thing he doesn't need is he doesn't need Bloomberg's money. The other guys do. So the other ones know that you don't want to take Bloomberg off because if Bloomberg loses he's committed that he will give all his resources to whoever the nominee is. Bernie doesn't really need that. 
Bernie's got a money's not Bernie's issue. Bernie's issue is does the rank and file, the central part of the the middle part, the middle core of the party, does it believe he can win? Or do they think he's too extreme? There are Democrats out there that don't like Trump. There are Democrats out there who want badly to get a victory in November, but they do not like his views. They think he's way out there. They think he's destructive. They think Bernie's, you know, is is anything but a guy who is, you know, something that makes sense for America. That his programs are way too, way too left and way too radical. And a lot of people feel that way. I feel that way. I don't think what he says is realistic. I don't think he can pay off everybody's student's loan. I don't think that's even remotely possible. I don't think he can give everybody free college, and I don't think in a country of 330 million people he can give everybody health care. I think all those are preposterous. I don't think there's any one of those that he could ever get through. We already have, we already have debt that is insane, and it's growing enormously. It grows for every president, and it's still growing dramatically now. The Republicans used to care about the, uh, the, the, how big the deficit was. They don't seem to care anymore. The bottom line is it's enormous. And eventually somebody's going to pay the piper. We're going to leave our kids in a very, very bad way with that thing. I don't know if it'll be in our lifetime, but in their lifetime for sure. In my kids' lifetime, absolutely. I worry about that. You worry about the country you're going to leave behind for your kids. You do worry because you worry about it from your kids' standpoint. You want them to have a life that, you know, you, like, you want it to, you think that it's going to be a prosperous place when, and be the America we always know it's been when, when we leave. This time you wonder about it in 30, 40 years. You really do. Especially when it comes to that, the, uh, the size of the deficit, which is going to start to really wreak havoc. It, it, it probably should have already, as a matter of fact. We keep pushing it, the can down the road. And eventually, you know, it's going to happen. They're going to have to pay the piper. But back to this idea of him getting involved, him being Bloomberg, and him really having this, this isn't politics. This is actually a feud feud. This is, this is past politics. This is like an old-time New York backroom brawl. They don't like each other. They detest each other. And... They know they can get on. They know that Minnie Mike and all the other stuff bothers Bloomberg, and Bloomberg knows, and rightly so, that every jab he gets in about Trump being a terrible businessman and starting wealthy and everything really gets under the president's skin, which it does. So it's fascinating to watch. Now, there's a lot that has to happen here. So, because let's be honest, Bloomberg really isn't a Democrat. He's trying to steal a nomination, but the party might come to a point where they want to be Trump enough that they say, this guy is our only chance. I thought that's why I kept thinking Biden would win all these months because I thought there would be a realization to where the party would say, hey, look at what has to happen. Look at the party, look at the party, which is in three parts. The party's got to come together. And we have to be able to get some of that middle, some of that independent person who goes either way in election, maybe votes Democrat this time, votes Republican that time, basically leaves it open, is not really a party ideologue, is someone who basically goes with the flow and votes based on what's going on in the world at the time and what, how it affects him. Well, you got to get some of those. And in this thing, you're going to have to get a lot of those. And if that's the case, you wonder who can attract that. That's why I thought it was Biden. But he doesn't look like he's got any life left. Now, we're going to find out soon enough because he's going to have to pull a win off here. If he doesn't pull a win off here in Nevada or South Carolina or maybe both, we know that Bernie's got problems in, in, in Nevada because you have the culinary union there, which is so big, has put out pamphlets and leaflets and flyers saying that they don't agree with Bernie's health plan and they feel like it's a gross negative and they have announced that they have been pressured by the Bernie followers who are very rabid and that they don't like the idea that they've been pressured by them because they're 60,000 strong these guys in Nevada and they're not pro Bernie so that is the kind of issues that Bernie's going to run into as he gets deeper into the campaign 
can he do well with unions? Can he do well with people who don't want the health care touch? Can he do well in the black community? So those are going to be the issues. It's going to be interesting to watch. It really is.